Here we go. Hello. Uh, this is Dr. Marion Carroll. Welcome to Biochemistry 4130. This will be the second part of Chapter 1, which is the introduction to the chemistry of life. And in this chapter, we will talk about thermodynamics, uh, specifically the first and second law, as well as Gibbs free energy. Here are a couple of questions which we hope to be able to answer uh, once this lecture is complete. One of which uh, reads, a spontaneous biochemical reaction within a living cell is influenced by the heat content of that system and a change in the blank which is dependent on the temperature. Well, when we talk about heat content of the system, we are talking about the enthalpy or enthalpy of that system, or uh, delta H as the variable will be described. If uh, in uh, the second question, if gas molecules in an enclosed space are allowed to enter a second chamber, uh, as the example is shown in your text, the resulting distribution of gas molecules represents an increase in what? So if we go from a one chamber to a two chamber, we increase the volume in which the gas can expand, then we go from uh, we go to an increase in the number of ways these molecules can arrange themselves in the vessel. And that is a description of entropy, or the second law, which states that spontaneous processes are characterized by an increase in the uh, arrangement of molecules uh, within the system. And uh, finally, we will also use these and other terminologies to be able to suggest a simple criteria for a reasonable definition of life. And typically this involves uh, equilibrium. And equilibrium uh, is determined based on the concentration of the components in that system. For instance, in a reaction, the equilibrium ratio of A, B, C, and D is equilibrium constant and typically if it's greater than one it, incre it indicates a spontaneous reaction that is we have a negative delta G and uh, if we establish a starting point at equilibrium under standard conditions in which one mole of reactants and products are allowed to react then we will begin with a delta G under standard conditions of zero. And if we were to siphon off either reactants or products, we can shift the reaction in the forward or reverse direction to form either reactants or to form products. And any value with a negative delta G or any reaction that has a negative delta G it is ultimately defined as a spontaneous reaction because both delta S and delta H work in favor of the reaction going in that forward direction. So we will understand the variation of reaction spontaneity as a result of changes in delta H and delta S and we can simply look at the signs of the values, the values themselves are not as important as the distinction uh, between uh, values that are being compared. So this will conclude our discussion of Chapter 1. I appreciate you listening. I hope these videos will be useful. I hope to say they will get better as I get better at doing this. So continue to listen and I hope to see you in class.